life is good again. I never thought I'd say it. I never believed it, but it's good again. Just six months after this interview promoting her latest book about becoming a widow, Helen Bailey was murdered. She would thought she'd found love again, but while she was planning her upcoming wedding to fiancé Ian Stewart, he was planning her death. A close friend said Helen was besotted with him. He was on a widow and widower's website. Uh, he'd lost his wife and um, Helen was very excited to meet someone. Uh, he's spoken about or written about very much in her book. She would seemed happy in the relationship, the relationship was in a good place. There was nothing that alerted me. His motive was financial. Hi everybody, it's Helen. Um, I'm a writer. Her career as a best-selling author of 23 books had amassed her a £4 million fortune, which was to be left to him should she die. Did you suspect before he was arrested that he could be in any way involved? Someone really close to me said, you know, it's always the partner. And I know Helen's sense of judgment. And I was very, very closely involved. said, "Mm, well, you know, I can't imagine in this case. But Ian had been drugging his fiancée with sleeping pills prescribed to him for months before smothering her in a calculated killing on the 11th of April 2016. That afternoon, he transferred thousands of pounds from her account into one he had access to before CCTV captured him dumping bedding involved in the murder and then picking up a takeaway. Four days later, he finally rang the police to record Helen missing. Oh, she be so can I help? in an erratic phone call where he referred to her in the past tense and couldn't answer the most basic of questions. And what's her date of birth? Oh, crikey. God, she seems to find me there. Her eye colour? I don't know at the moment. Sorry, it's just gone oh, out of my head. Sorry, God, that's terrible. Before trotting out his cover story. She left a note. She said, she said in the note something like, I need space and time alone. And then this lie. He's definitely not at home, no. No, by the last night, I, I, I've literally checked everywhere. We have got quite a large house, but I've literally checked everywhere. During the three-month search for Helen, Ian was uncooperative, sometimes obstructive. So you're telling us you're hungry. We ideally probably would like to do another interview with you. Another one? As he watched police conduct what he knew to be a futile missing person investigation. He continued to text her phone and, despite his apparent grief, went on holiday before being arrested on suspicion of murder last July. On caution, he let slip where he dumped Helen. At the back of the home they shared is a garage. Hidden beneath a car was a hatch to a cesspit where police eventually found Helen's body. She'd been discarded to decompose in human excrement and alongside her, her dog Boris, that never left her side. Did you kill Helen Bailey? Ian Stewart refused to answer police questions before claiming Helen was killed by kidnappers who framed him. But his lies unravelled in court. You had the money, you had the planning, you had the use of the sedative, and then you had this extraordinary cover-up, which went on for several months, and then this, uh, this fantastical story that he produced that the crime had been committed by these shadowy figures called Nick and Joe. Ian Stewart planned the murder of a woman who loved him. For those that loved her, that's the ultimate heartache. What were the hardest things that came out from the trial? Um, How she'd been found. Um, And that she'd been with someone she loved and that this this had happened um, for her money. Sarah Hedgebegary, Sky News.